report to you. Nick is not. My name is Dr. Simon Harding. I'm a professor in criminology. I'm here today to continue our series on moped crime. Why does this occur? Who is involved? What lies behind this particular criminal activity? I'm going to speak now to two boys who are actively involved. These steel bikes, they're part of riding out together. Let's hear what they have to say. So boys, tell me, are you moped thieves or what? No, not moped thieves. Part of bike line. You're part of bike line? Yeah. And what is bike line? It's like that. Hey, I'm bad. We bought you. Come on. Maybe it's fucking no. We're active. That's what we know. 24-7. You know. And what, tell me, what is bike life? Bike life is. We are bike life. Yeah, we are bike life. Yeah. <laughs> You love bikes. You love bikes. I've got bikes every day. Every day, new bike, bro. A new bike every day? Yeah, How does that every work? Day, every day, nothing can stop me from that. So this is this is about taking bikes or just riding out in bikes? Both, to be honest. Like that. Okay, so tell me how it works. Do you boys have your own bike? I got my legit bike. You well. got your legit bike? Yeah, of course. Okay, and then. What do you do every day? You take a new bike, is that what you're telling me? Of course. Okay. And where do you find these? Everywhere. Everywhere you go. Everywhere. On the side of the road. Estates like this. Look, there's one right here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And how, how do you identify which bike you, that you want to take? This is a good bike. Right, you can start off with a little 125 like this. And then get anything big to run. No, we have to weigh up. Stuff and some, you know what I mean? Okay. And you can spot which bike is going to be valuable or worthwhile? The R1 Ninjas and that. Oh my, that was just beautiful to eat, bro. Uh, which one? R1 and Ninjas. R1, okay, okay. And is that the top bike at the moment? Is that the one that you would really go for? Right now, I'll mm. go for any bike right now, bro. I don't give a fuck what bike it is. Who use it is, I don't care. Take it, I want it. And how many of these would you take uh, in a week? In a week? <laughs> One more. You don't even know, you don't even want to know how many I get in a day. Oh, how many how many would you get in a day? Oh, too many people. Really? Too Two many. or three? At least oh, ten. At least ten. If you go up to ten. Yeah. And, what, and what what do you do with them? Where do you put them once you've got them? I've got I've got places to park them off. Yeah, places. You park them off? Yeah. Okay, uh, w w what kind of places would that be? A garage or a shed? Anyway, I can't, I can't give too much information. I've got my place. Like there still can't give too much information like that. Yeah. Okay, but so you would have somewhere where you would store them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's the purpose of storing them? Basically, see if it has a truck on it. Basically, go back to it the next night. If it's still there, we're winning. You get it? <laughs> if it's not there, then fuck it. It's just an elk. We'll grab another one. You know what I mean? Right, okay. So you would check to see if it has a tracker? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and if it has a tracker, do you just leave it or do you t to get rid of the tracker? No, obviously, if it has a tracker on the back, it's going to be there, isn't it? The police have been taken already. Right, so if it has a tracker, the police are going to come and find it? Yeah, they're going to take it. So by the time we get there, because we're going to go back the next day, the back is going to be there when we have a tracker. Right, okay. Well, the police might even be waiting there. Exactly, to see if anyone comes back. Okay. I've done that new, multiple times before, and I still can't catch up. Never been nicked for a bike, mate. I can promise no. you that now. And how long have you been uh, nicking bikes? As I said last time, since the age, oh, the age of mad bubble. Since the age of 12, I've been nicking bikes, bro. Rode my first bike when I was 11. So, yeah. How old are you now? Me, yeah, 18. Uh, and Saf, how old are you? 19. So you've been nicking bikes for five or six years? Yeah. On a regular weekly basis? Every day. Every single day. Well, that's, a of, that's a lot of nicking. Yeah. And what made you attracted to bikes in the first place? That. I, I got shown how to do it. 
Uh, I just thought it was easy, quick way to make money. So what? And who was it? Who was it that showed you? We got together. Like, okay. Back to hands on. But who who showed you how to do it in the first instance? Uh, one of my orders. One of your orders. Uh, okay. And how about you? I put myself through. I had to go through the struggle of fucking up a lot of times, but I got there. You know what I mean? And I do what I do the best. No one's better than us. We put team all the fucking way. Come on. So when you say you screwed up a, f a few times, was that in terms of how you actually stole the bike? No, in the way I had to start the bike. R all right, okay. You know what I mean? Sometimes bikes are complicated. It depends what type of bike it is. If there's a moped, they're the easiest problem. Right. But when there's a motorbike, it's a bit more complicated. You know you've got to re it. You've got to re it to where you're parking it off. Cause exactly, you can't. You can't, can't hot wire them. You can only hot wire like under one, two, right? Yeah. Why well, you got like emulators? Right. So motor bikes are more difficult. Yeah. yeah. You got to emulate them. You got to what? You got to buy an emulator yeah. to start them. Okay. You can't hot wire them. Okay. And a little chip. It works like a key. And you carry that with you? No, no I don't. But most of the time, I always got one in my house. So always, there's, there's always one in my door. I so see. And what, what, what about security? Because some of these bikes have got oh. a lot of security. Brother, I don't give a shit. I'll cut them off, I've got angle grinders and trust me, brother, angle grinders all day long. Trust me, when you see a white team X, just know who it is. It's us. Know that. It's us. And would you carry that with you when you go out, just robbing? Yeah. I'll carry that with me everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, these bags I'm on, there's always an angle grinder. Right. No matter what bag it is. And how quickly uh, can you um, manage to get that off then, when you've got this tool with you? Depends on many blocks you have. One lot takes about five seconds, ten seconds, you know what I mean? That quick? quick. It's an electric angle down the problem. Right. Mm -hmm. Quick. Trust me, brother. And what if, what if the bike is covered with uh, a tarpaulin or a canvas? What then? I'll take that as well. I need that. I need them things. Right. right. To cover it up after as well, you know what I mean? But the police give advice to people to say if you want to protect your bike from being stolen, then you've got to have it covered with a canvas and secured with a chain. There's two of us, I'll, I'll just pull over next to the bike, he'll jump off and just pull it off, see if it's got locks, yeah. pop the stairs. If it, if it does have locks, he'll just get off the bike as well, put it on the big stand, pull up the seat, take on the angle grind off, do my thing for, do what I do best. Right, well that's very fast isn't it? And do, do does somebody uh, act as a lookout for this? or? It depends how many bikes we're, we're riding up in it. If we're one bike up, then there's only me and him. If we're on two bikes up, there's the other two members that are in the So I mean? two bikes up would mean both of you arriving on your own separate bikes, is that yeah, right? Yeah, that means he's driving one and I'm driving the other. And I've got someone on the back of mine, he's got someone on the back of his. Okay, and then we can get another two bikes, yeah, bring yeah. them back, go out on the, on, on the same two bikes, go get another two, and then come back, go get another two. That's how it works. Bro. So the boys who ride pillion on the, on the back, they can drive off the bikes that the that we just got. To yeah, steal. yeah, yeah. Like we can do it all that long. Every every two bikes we get, we can get another two members. You know what I mean? Can't get more and more because two people can fit on each bike. So really and truly, you can fit four people on one bike. Right. But then basically, that's attracting attention. I don't want to do that. So help me out here because people who are watching this are going to be asking this question: What is in it for you? Why Why are you doing this? Money, quick money, money. Quick money. And how is the money made? Just sell them on. Sell the parts. Sell the bike. Sell them to Bike Life members. You know what I mean? UK Bike Life raise it up. Nice down bikes up. You know. So tell me how much money is actually to be made here. It depends what type of bike we get. Okay, so an ordinary moped, um, would you break it down? Well, would you sell like the this. parts? Something yeah, like something this. like this. 150 pounds. If you sell it intact as is? Yeah, stolen. Okay. As it is, no key. Okay. And who who would you sell that to? Uh, man them on the block. Yeah, man them, innit? Okay. People that just want to go do ride out for starters, you know what I mean? People that got problems in areas and they want to go sort them out, you know what I mean? On a quick thing. Uh, bikes are a quick getaway. Quick. No traffic. No way. You can go where police can't go. Trust me. 
Is that why uh, young lads like to have a, a moped or a scooter now? Yeah. Because of that reason, is that it? That's what I believe. And what about uh, uh, breaking them down and selling on the parts? Do you make much money that way? That's just long. I just like to get the bikes and get rid of them quick. Yeah, really cheesy, but if it's more like a big bike, then I would rather break it down and sell on the part. Right. I'm not okay. I'm, I'm, like, I don't like to have the same bike longer than two days. Why is that? Because it just gets hot after a while. And it draws the attention of the police and yeah, the authorities? Yeah. Okay. Like, I don't care about the police, but... Yeah, fuck the police. They can't catch me. Like, I've been out every day. And do they chase you? Do they pursue you? Even if the child will still getting away. And when they pursue you, is it in cars or on? are they also on bikes? They're on bikes now as well, I'm not going to lie, yeah, they are. So, no, I, I can see how the police has taken action in Morford Crime, but they ain't going to do nothing. Why is that? Because people are still going to be getting away. Like, Morford, Morford Crime is never going to stop, just like hunger in the war. So when you say you see action that the police are taking, what kind of things are you seeing? Like, I can see a lot more police that, like, pursuing mopeds now. Like, a lot more police pursue us now. Right. Like, but, like, I'll say like a, like a couple of six months ago, police would not chase us. You know what I mean? Like, now police chase us each time. They like the other day us. they knocked us off our bike. Yeah, the other day we crashed. You crashed or they knocked you off? They knocked, knocked us off. off. So they used what a car, yeah. Yeah. and they used the car to collide and hit you, to yeah. ram you. Yeah. Tell me, tell me how that came about then. What, what do, what, how did it start? First, they started pursuing us, and then it's, they, it's a car. Really, truly, we was on one two five, so they just hit us. But yeah, we got back on the back, cut out. I had to jump on the back of him because his back wasn't working. It snapped my wrist. He broke his foot. So they partic they they used their car to ram you or to knock you off specifically. Yeah, he yeah, off. Hit, we went flying. Hit us off our bikes. He went flying. We was on two separate bikes. He went flying into the air. I do frog flips every. I promise you, he he done at least four frog flips. They rolled up two cars up. Oh man, dickheads, man. These are wet. Fuck them, no. Hey listen yeah, fuck the feds in it, they are never gonna catch us. Hey listen yeah, the feds are here now. Obviously, once they're gone, I'm gonna go get another thing, so fuck them. Okay, so just tell me, break it down for me. The police were chasing you and they knocked you off your bike first and then your bike, is that right? Yeah. So tell me exactly how it happened. <coughs> like, literally, we were just riding, feast on a U turn, quick thing. It's like, like, blues and twos are on, it's like chasing us. And then, yeah. How long have they been pursuing you before you came off the bike? About five, ten minutes. 
five or ten minutes. I mean, that's a long time. But the you, like ma he said you managed to get away. Yeah, of course. On his one. Okay. So when you came off the, you fell onto the road. Is that right? Yeah, I flew up in the air. He flew up in the air. I was sliding across the ground. Okay, and you were obviously injured. I mean, you have a bad leg, you have a bad arm. Yeah. Uh, did the police take you to hospital, or what happened? No, we got away from him. I, I didn't go to hospital until six hours later. Okay, yeah. so you ran after you came off the bike? No, we, we came off the bike, got back on the bike and got away. <laughs> you got back on the bike and got Okay, yeah, so the bikes were not damaged and you were yeah, able to well, ride away? My one was, here's one was. His bike was ruined. Really? So you left your bike and rode off on your bike? Yeah. I drove up up the road and then I clocked, uh, I realised that I snapped my wrist. I was like, Tim, bro, I can't get us away, I can't drive. So obviously I just got off the bike, got on the back, he started driving. And then, yeah, he just got away. And then just rode up like five weeks, smoked up, no pain, nothing, chilling. How do you feel about it now, that experience? Really, truly, it's going to stop me. It's really hot. Have you learned anything from that experience about how dangerous this can be? No. It's not dangerous. It's just the way I live. You're not going to stop you? Nope. You only live once. Trust me. Live your, work. Live your life to the fullest. So what is it about bike life and uh, moped crime that is so attractive to you then? I just love bikes and I love speed. Yeah, not back or in the blood. Just, uh, would riding out in a bike not be sufficient? Why Why do you have to get involved in stealing them? Because oh, I'm making money at the same time of what, what I'm doing. What, uh, You're making money too. Yeah. And what about the buzz of being chased by the police? Is that something? I love it. Amazing. Tell me how that how that feels. It's true. Nice. Because it's like a game. Like. Yeah, it's a game. There's a cat and mouse game where the mouse, they're the cat. Right. They're the cat catch us. They've tried so hard. This ain't the first time I've been hit off my bike. Of course not. And do you, you've got your own tactics and manoeuvres that you've been able to use? Of course. I'm a reckless driver. You don't want to see me drive me, I promise you that. Mm. I am one of the dangerous drivers in, in London. I can tell you that. One of the best. Trust me, bro. But is that true? Because nah, uh, obviously the police not got the best rider. Because <laughs> <laughs> the police, Trust the police knocked you off your bike. So you know, is that? Uh, is That's that only because of the back wheels on. All right. Only it's slow, on like it's one two five. Like. Fuck one two five. Man. But if, so it, we go, if we was on like anything bigger, oh, I would have been like, oh, bye bye. You would have been away. And I hear some boys uh, film some of this on their yeah, mobile ID. phone yeah, yeah. and post this up, is that yeah, right? ID. And why do they do that? What's the value of posting things up on social media? Well, the value. There's no value, but actually you just get views for it, innit? You get views. Yeah. Does it make you look good amongst your mates and your bros? No, no, I don't care. It's just what I do. I want other people to see it. Like me and him was on live on Instagram one time and he rolled past the police officer and slapped him in the head. <laughs> Okay, okay. So it's a regular thing then, maybe posting and uh, mm -hmm. filming. Everything. Does that add to the, the buzz and the, the excitement? And yeah, it's fun. No, I, you can just see I don't, I don't post it. I don't, I don't post anything on Snapchat and Instagram. It's too hot. It's too hot, okay. I don't want people know what I'm doing. And uh, do you think you're going to continue this for, for some time? It's going to be like that. You don't think you'll maybe grow out of it, or you'll find something else to do, or? No, I love bikes. I like to the day I die, like food. Would you like to be involved in uh, working with bikes at some point in in the future, or, or are you going to try and stick with the criminal side of it? No, I can't read the future. I can't tell you. And can I ask, are you connected in any way to street gangs? Just a big group of friends. Just yeah. okay. Family members. Your family, okay, okay. But you're not affiliated or members of any specific gang, are you? Mm. Our gang's called the Reform Team. Reform the Reform Team. Team. And when you say your gang, I mean, is, is that what just a group of your friends or? It's just me, him, two others, really. 
few others. Right, okay. And in terms of uh, selling on bike parts and stuff like that, do you have a group of people that you would do that with? People, people you know you can sell to? Like I said earlier, that I've got my buyers. For my Your buyers? Yeah. Right. Okay. So, I mean, it's a pretty active life, isn't it? I guess you boys are not working at the moment, so. Okay. So, do you view this as your work? It's my job. This is it your job? Yeah, it's my job. Every morning, I get up, brush my teeth, go to work. And is there any particular time of day where it's easy or Midnight. profitable? Midnight, really. Midnight? Yeah. Oh, so quite late? Yeah. I'm, I'm like, us two are out here 24-7. 24-7, I don't give a fuck what time it is. Oh, I see, it's okay. It's light or dark, I don't care. If I see a bike that I like, I take it. Yeah. And Sav, I guess the same for you, huh? Yeah. So you're going to be involved in this for a while, even though you've got uh, injuries. This ain't going to stop me, don't worry about this. I can still ride, I still got my hands. He can't ride at the moment, but this is only temporary, temporary. Soon back. two weeks. Trust me, two weeks, you've seen me back out here, man. Trust me. But you could be, you could be seriously injured in this kind of uh, cat and mouse game that you play with the police. Seriously injured. Yeah, I get injured, recover again, do the same thing. I don't care. Does it put you off? No. It's just another game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're just losing a life, basically, yeah, on the you game. Just, you just lose it. But if you come off your bike, I mean, you could die. But like I said, you only live once, so once yeah. is your time, it's your time. That's when you die, that's when you're meant to die, isn't it? You're dead, you're laying on coming back from that. you done. At least I know I lived my life to the fullest, you know what I mean? And as part of this, buzz that you get with the police, part of this excitement of the cat and mouse game, is that part of living your life? Mm. You could say that. Breaking into these bikes, what kind of tools would you use in order to do that? Well, me, to pop front panels, I like to use a screwdriver, you know, always put one on every single day, you know what I mean? And then, to strip wires on like one to five to start them. I use wire cutters, you know, quick snap snap, quick tip, you know what I mean? And you carry these tools with you every day? Every single day. He's got them on him, so, you know. But I don't use wire cutters, I use a lot. Yeah, he uses a lot. He likes to do it the reckless way. Okay, and how does that work? Just burn the, just burn the top, uh, cover of the wires, pull them off, and then just twist the wires together the back of the off. Right, okay, and how long does that take? Ten seconds. And so which of these methods is quicker? My one. He likes to pull off the panel and then put it in the light of things. But me, I like to take my time, do it properly, you know, and then I can put my panel back on. I look legit. Go ahead and I look legit, you know what I mean? It's fast. Good. Me, okay. me, top, 11 seconds, 12 seconds. Really? Good. And you feel that's the most effective way? I thought that's, that's the best way to do it, that's what I thought, that's what I thought. And if it's chained up, how, how long would it take you to get the chain off? That's it. Really? And it's very fast, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Is there anything the uh, police or the government can do to kind of make these bikes more secure? No, fuck them, they can't do shit. I know if, if, if I owned R1 or something, it would be in my house. Yeah, that bike is <laughs> in my house. You see, I'm not dumb, you know what I mean? That like, my own little jet bike is in my house. I don't keep my bike outside, no way. Okay. Because I know how easy it is to get them, so... Do you know what I mean? Or not. So you know, you don't keep your bike outside because you know there are guys like you who are out there ready to get the yeah. bikes. Yeah. <laughs> So there I've been speaking to two boys who are actively involved in moped crime. They tell me they ride out every day, every day, every week. They steal bikes every day. This is a, a multiple offence that they're involved in. It's obviously very profitable for them. They have ways and means of getting rid of the bikes or getting rid of the bike parts. And the security around a bike, whether it's chains, locks or canvas covers, doesn't seem to matter to them at all. They've got the tools, they've got the means and the ability to do it. And once they've done it, they get away very quickly. 
and even getting knocked off their bike by a pursuing police car that leads to their own injury is not going to stop them. These boys have talked about bike life. Bike life for them is much more than just an active interest in bikes. It's much more about just making money. It's about the pursuit, the cat and mouse game that gets uh, followed through by the police when the police are on to them. It's a dangerous life, but it's a very addictive life.